Look, I think because of perfectionism, we're missing opportunities that we think that are too hard or that are too risky, and we let our good ideas die in the vine, and we see other people pursuing the things that we thought we should do, and we're left with regret and envy. And I think that bravery is the key to joy. When you spoke to all these women across the country, how did you distill that from what they told you? You know, because so many of them told me about like unrealized dreams, right? That they stayed in, the, in their English class because they were good at it, but really they wanted to be a neurobiologist. Uh, they stayed in toxic relationships because they thought that they should. They got bumped, you know, on the street and they said sorry instead of the guy who bumped into them. Like they were constantly, had this kind of toxic people pleasing and perfectionism and it was really killing them inside. And it was also creating a leadership gap. So many of them, you know, had ideas, right? Wanted to raise their hand for that promotion, but they thought that they weren't ready and they said no. And they had a lot of regret about that. In the old days, this would be, you know, being shy. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and that in, in, in parents and teachers would try and get students, we, girls, to not be so shy with their ideas. Raise your hand, express your viewpoint, mm -hmm. don't be afraid. How is this different this time around? Because I, I actually think the way that we've raised our girls is completely wrong. You know, we've coddled them, we've protected them. You know, we, you know their, their dress gets messy and we immediately fix it. And we let our boys just crawl to the top of the monkey bars and just jump head first. And now our girls are afraid to get anything other than an A, right? And you know, you have real serious mental health consequences that you're seeing because of this. And we can't afford that anymore. You know, today 40% of America's breadwinners are women. You know, automation is changing everything about the way that we live and work. We need our girls, our young women, to be brave, braver than they've ever been. So you're saying that the, the highest achievers at a, a younger age end up deciding to conform and doing, therefore, worse uh, over the long term? I mean, Carol Dweck says that if life was one long grade school, girls would rule the world. But bravery is what matters in the real world. I mean, for example, there's a study that shows that when a young woman signs up for a major in college, if she doesn't get an A in her introductory course, she'll leave it. Whereas the boy's like, I got a B, that's amazing. I was speaking to a mechanical engineering professor and he was saying that uh, before he even puts the assignment up on the board, the guy's like, oh, I know the answer. And he's like, dude, I haven't even put the question up yet. So there's this sense, I think, uh, with you know, young women is that I gotta, I gotta know the answer perfectly before I even try. And boys just aren't raised that way. I don't, I, 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 sweeping. I have to say, so here's my question for you. Yeah. Why, but why are, we, why are you so convinced that women are perfectionists and men are? That's the part that I'm, I'm less well, I mean, you, there's, it shows that like women will apply for a job if they meet, you know, only 100% of the qualifications. Men will apply when they meet 60% of the qualifications. I think a lot of this is really documented in terms of what you're seeing in the workplace, and quite frankly, what I'm seeing in speaking to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of women. And I do think it starts at a very young age. You know, from the time that boys and girls are 30 months old, boys are building, you know, blocks that are high and just. So is this book really down. for parents? No, this book is for everybody. This book is for parents. Oh, but I am for... a parent, so help me. So I have a, two, yeah. I have a little two-year-old. Girl, girl or boy? No, girl. Okay. And, and then there's two other boys, which <laughs> many, many of the Squawk viewers have met, actually. Uh, but no, but for, so how, what, what do I need to do with Sydney that's different than what we're doing with Max and Henry? Well, I'll give you a fight that we had at my house, because okay. I have a four-year-old boy. OK. Uh, my son a year ago was like, I'm scared of the dark. And so I bought him a nightlight, plugged it in. We'd go upstairs and plug it in. You know, I'd go into my room. 10 minutes later, my husband will come upstairs, take out the nightlight, and Sean will start screaming. And I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, I want to toughen him up. And I said, Nahal, if Sean was a girl, would you let, her have, would you let him have the nightlight? And he said, yeah, I would. So there's these things that we do, I think, at a very young age to kind of protect, we think we're protecting them, but we're really coddling them. Right. And we're wrapping them up with bubble wrap. So for your daughter, let her get real messy. I need to, you know? I need to Tell her to tinker and take things apart. <laughs> my wife would take away the nightlight, trust me. Thank you, yes. Reshma. It's great Absolutely to see so you. Much. Reshma Sojani, uh, Girls Who Code founder and uh, CEO. Her new book, again, Brave Not Perfect.